Today we're looking at the Granger Movement and Farmers Alliances. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. Also, don't forget to check out dailybellringer.com where you'll find more resources that go with many of the Bell Ringer videos. The National Grange was and still is an organization of farmers that together promote the agricultural industry and support farmers and their families. Grange is an old English term meaning an isolated farm and the official name of the National Grange is the National Grange of the Order of Patrons of Husbandry, which husbandry is another term for keeping livestock and farming. The National Grange was founded shortly after the American Civil War. Oliver Kelly, who was a clerk for the Department of Agriculture, toured the South and Western parts of the United States after the war and was concerned about the lack of innovation and education among farmers. Many farmers were using outdated agricultural methods and Kelly felt there needed to be an organization that would bring farmers together and promote innovation in agriculture. The first Grange was founded in Fredonia, New York in 1868. Within a few short years, several other chapters were established. The National Grange was unique in that it encouraged participation by women at a time when women were not extended equal rights. And two, it allowed members as young as 14. If you were old enough to operate a plow, you were considered old enough to be part of the Grange. The organization offered several initiatives to help farmers, such as providing education on new farming practices, and even organized social gatherings for farming families living in isolated areas. They also formed cooperative stores where farmers bought and sold items from each other on a cash-only basis to prevent farmers from taking out loans and going into debt. Membership in the National Grange grew steadily as farmers began to face serious issues in the 1870s and the Grange became a movement as Grangers pushed for political and economic changes. One major problem was the supply of crops grew faster than the demand which caused crop prices to plummet. For example, a bushel of corn fell from 41 cents in 1874 to only 30 cents by 1897. A major contributing factor to this overproduction or surplus of crops was Americans taking advantage of the Homestead Act and starting new farms. It's estimated that in the 1870s that close to 190 million new acres of land were being plowed and farmed. Also, industrialization was moving quickly and new, more efficient farming machinery was being developed that could harvest more crops and allow farmers to cultivate more land. This in turn led to farmers needing more land to farm and the need for new expensive machinery. So many farmers borrowed money from banks to get land and equipment. Many of these banks charged very high interest, or in other words, an additional charge for borrowing money. In some cases, banks were charging over 300% interest on loans. Farmers were having a difficult time making profits, paying back loans, and supporting their families. They blamed many of their problems on railroads, which they felt were charging too much to transport crops, and again on banks that were charging high interest rates on loans that farmers had taken out for land, machinery, or seed. The Granger movement, as it came to be known, put political pressure on state governments to do something to help farmers. During the 1870s, many states across the Midwest passed laws to regulate how much railroads could charge for transporting crops. However, railroads also put pressure on these state legislatures, and by the end of the 1870s, many of these regulations had been lifted. As the 1880s approached, the Granger movement began to lose momentum, and by the 1880s, farmers began to join farmers' alliances across the South and West. These alliances offered many of the same support that the National Grange did, and their memberships rapidly grew. By 1890, the Southern Alliance of Farmers had over 2.5 million members. Additionally, close to 1 million African American farmers had joined farming alliances that were formed solely to aid African American farmers. These alliances again established cooperative stores in an attempt to keep farmers from going into debt. 
Eventually, by the late 1880s and early 1890s, the Farmers' Alliances began to get involved in politics. In the election of 1890, Farmer Alliance candidates won 50 seats in the House of Representatives, three seats in the U.S. Senate, and six governor races. After this political success, the Farmers' Alliances movement transformed into a national political party, the People's Party of the USA, which also came to be known as the Populist Party. This party was rooted in the idea idea of being the party of the common man and looking out for their interest. But the story of the populist party will have to wait for another bell ringer. So with that, hopefully you learned something and thanks for watching.